50. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 4, verses 35 through 41. I just want to read verse number 35. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, and verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Now in this story, a familiar story, it is Jesus and his disciples and they encounter a storm. But the part that grabbed me was this phrase, these instructions, the directions that the Lord Jesus gave them in verse 35 when he said, Let us pass over to the other side. In that statement, in that phrase, you see the people of God. He said, let us, a certain group. In verse 36, watch your Bible. You'll learn a lot if you'll watch your Bible. They sent the multitude away. I'm not bought into this uh, saying that we're all God's children. I believe we're all God's creation, but only those born again washed in His blood are the children of God. This was a specific us. Thank God I'm part of the us, the people of God. Matter of fact, in verse 36, that says they took him even as he was into the ship. I got news for you this morning. You'll take him just like he is or you'll go to hell without God. Church, we'll take him just like he is or there'll always be something missing from our life. There'll be a void that never seems to be filled. This, we see the people of God. Not only do we see the people of God, I think we see the purpose of God. It was the Lord's purpose for them to go from one side unto the other. Not only do I see the people of God and the purpose of God, but I think the disciples missed this and may we not miss it this morning in this phrase I see the promise of God that we, he said let us, that me and him are going from here unto the other side. Now I'll be transparent this morning and tell you I have never seen the Lord Jesus with my natural eyes I've not had visions or dreams I've never seen into heaven I've never been like Paul and caught up into the third heaven but I met him one morning at an old fashioned altar and I know him and he knows me and I know from that day when he saved me that I was leaving that place and we were going together unto the other side I don't have any Anything else but a promise. I don't have anything else but his word. But I found out a long time ago that his word was all I need. And I'm going from here to the other side. And all the way I'm on ride, I'm on travel, I'm on sail, I'm on journey on his promise. And for a few minutes from these verses, I want to preach on this thought. Riding on a promise. First of all, we'll see in this story. When you're riding on a promise, you will face a great storm. Watch what happens in verse 37. And there a rose. It gives the idea that just all of the sudden I don't know about you but them great storms don't seem to come a little bit at a time. They just seem to rise up all of a sudden. Notice your Bible. He said there a rose a great storm. He's not just talking about the everyday life. He's talking about something they weren't used to. Something they hadn't faced before and even though we're riding from here to the other side hand in hand with the Lord Jesus you will face a great storm now notice the Bible said it was a storm of wind a great storm of wind doesn't say anything about rain doesn't say anything about thunder lightning just all of a sudden everything was going along I've seen the halos pop up off your head you might not know what I'm talking about but I've been going along everything was falling into place me and the Lord Jesus was skipping on the mountain tops uh, and just all of a sudden uh, I didn't even feel a slight breeze begin to blow just all of a sudden uh, a hurricane if you will came out of nowhere a tornado blew through my life and a great storm of wind that great storm that you face will hinder you now, so I'm going to just go ahead and tell you I'm no super saint uh, uh, the wind gets to blowing at my life gets to blowing 
blowing at my house. It seems like it blows us off course. It slows us down. It stops us from doing what we want to do. We don't seem like we're moving forward. We seem like we lost our way. Great storms hinder us. They not only hinder us, what's what he said, that the waves beat into the ship. They not only hinder us, but they hurt us. I'm not uh, insensitive when those great storms blow into my life. When they come up all of a sudden, uh, they just seem like they just keep hammering and they just keep punching and they just keep beating. Uh, don't hold your head down, child of God. Uh, they hurt me too. Uh, when I'm sailing on a promise, when I'm riding on a promise and we go through one of those great storms, it hurts. Hallelujah. It hurts. It just beats on you and beats on you. Then he said, uh, until the ship was now full. Now I'm a Navy veteran and an avid fisherman. I know one thing about a boat when it gets full of water. She's about to sink. Not only was these, this great storm hindering them, not only was this great storm hurting them, this great storm was heavy on them. I mean, that was weighing the boat down. I'm talking about, let me just go ahead and make somebody mad this morning. I believe it's a misinterpretation of Scripture. I've not bought in that God won't put more on you than you can bear. You let your baby boy lay in the hospital with a breathing tube run down his throat, tubes run in his head, every vein uh, hooked up with a, a eye IVs, pick lines in his legs and the doctor tell you that he's never going to live, that he's never going to walk, that he's never going to talk and it'd be best if he just died. I promise you as me and my wife stood in that room and our hearts were breaking it was heavy on us. Wouldn't any cell phones in? Wouldn't any, uh, uh, wouldn't any uh, prayer chains? Wouldn't any pastor standing with us? It just her and I standing in that room all by ourselves when all of a sudden that great storm of wind come up and it was heavy on us. I was thinking this is it. I'd been pastoring a little old church, working two jobs, uh, double tithing, read ten chapters a day, pray three times a day, and God let this come up in my life. This is it. It's too heavy for us to bear. I'm a going under this time, but I'm glad the story doesn't end in the storm. Hallelujah. The next verse you'll find, not only in a, when you're riding on a promise will you face a great storm, Storm, but you'll find a great Savior. It said, and he, hallelujah, business is about to pick up. He was in the hinder part of the ship. He is right there with me. My wife and I are standing in that room. Our hearts are breaking. I should have said something to her, but I didn't know what to say. And all of a sudden, a doctor had told me it'd be best if your son dies. Be best for him. Be best for you and your wife. Be best for the entire family. And he walked out out of the room and we are standing there in that great storm it was hitting on us it was hurting us it was heavy and all of a sudden believe what you want to nobody opened the door nobody threw the window up all of a sudden the Lord Jesus my wife sitting right there and testify stepped up in between us put his arms all around us and it dawned on me that no matter how bad the storm was no matter how much the ship was a rocket Hallelujah, he is right there with me in the hinder part of the ship. I'm glad that you'll find a great Savior in his presence. No matter what you're going through, child of God, no matter how bad it seems, I got good news today. He, You may not feel him. You may not be able to find him. But as the songwriter said, standing somewhere in the shadows, there is Jesus. The only way I made it through the storm is he is in the hinder part of the ship. He was with me as we sailed through this storm. You'll find it in his presence. You'll find this great truth, this Savior, and that, now this is going to throw you a little bit, in his pillow. He was in that, what's your Bible? He was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Well, he doesn't even care. He's asleep on a pillow. No, that ain't the message at all. Could you imagine now, I love to fish. They say you can't love to fish, but they don't know me. I love to fish. Could you imagine if you told me, be up early in the morning, meet me at a certain place, we're going to go fishing. You show up and you got the boat and the tackle and the rods and the reels, and I show up and the only thing I got is a pillow stuck under my arm. You know 
I ain't coming to do no fishing. <laughs> what the Lord Jesus was letting them know about that pillar is we're going to sail to the other side. It doesn't matter what we encounter because it may scare you to death it may beat on you it may knock you down uh, it may take this from you it may take that from you but Jesus said you just look at this pillow it ain't scaring me one bit it ain't got me shook one bit it's got you blowed upside down it's got you all out of whack it's got you uh, uh, your mind's going in a thousand different directions but it hadn't stirred me up he's asleep on a pillow during the storm they're trying to bail water no doubt they're screaming at one another the winds are blowing the boats are rocking and a, a slamming everywhere and there's Jesus asleep on a pillar every time you think about that pillar you ought to remember that no matter how big it is no matter how bad it is no matter how dark it gets I'm glad thank God uh, it ain't bigger than him it ain't better than him uh, it's not tougher than him uh, he's still asleep on a pillar you know what I found out reading my Bible I found out that it was in the darkest times that you run into Jesus now here they are all hope is gone the Bible said in verse number 38 that they awake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish they found him in the worst they didn't find him when the storm first came up they didn't find him when the waves started rocking but when the boat got full and it was too heavy for them and when they couldn't go anywhere else that's when they find him you know what I found out I found out there's a man by the name of Daniel who wouldn't stop praying they throw him in a den of lions not a lion's den, lion's den could have been empty, they throwed him into a den of lions, hungry lions in that den, the next morning when the king come down and said Daniel you still alive, he hollered up and said don't worry about it the angel of the Lord anytime you see that in the Old Testament you just write out beside it Jesus Christ, he said right down here in my den of lions right down here when I thought I'd be eaten up right down here when I thought this is it I'm a going under guess what happened he bumped right into Jesus they throw three Hebrew boys in a fire amidst all that fire and smoke and heat guess what happened they bumped right into Jesus the king said he changed the math down here in Babylon we put in three and it turned into four and the fourth man looks just like the son of God uh, David said I was a walking through the valley of the shadow of death death was a stalking me I was scared down there in the valley till I bumped into him Lord what you doing down here he said I swelled up then cause I wouldn't he said I will fear no evil for thou art with me and these disciples in the worst storm the ships are sinking they think they gonna go under and guess where they found him right where he was hallelujah right in the middle of their great storm it is in your great storm that you'll find a great Savior. You'll find him in his presence. You'll find him in his pillow. You'll find him in his peace. Now they run to him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? <coughs> Notice that word perish. Jesus was speaking to a Pharisee one night by the name of Nicodemus. And he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish perish means to cease to exist to be annihilated to be done away with got good news for you that storm can't perish you hallelujah that giant can't perish you we who are saved shall never perish but Jesus doesn't stop and rebuke the disciples. He doesn't even stop right yet and teach the disciples. Watch what happens. Watch your Bible. I love this. It's the only reason I preached it. The Bible said they came unto him and say, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Master, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Guess what he did? Look at it. What's he do? He arose. 
He just jumped up right quick. I'm glad, thank God, I got a Savior that when my storm just jumps up right quick, when it comes out of nowhere, he can do the same thing. He'll just step in out of nowhere. I didn't see him coming. I didn't feel any goosebumps. Just all of the sudden down there in that hospital room. He just stepped right up in the middle of it. If you got a storm arise, hang on, honey. Because we got a Savior who can rise, if you will, to your occasion. Watch this now. He arose. Now what's the wording of the Bible? And he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea. Now I'm going to stop right here. He rebuked the wind, but he spoke to the sea. Let us all be careful. The reason he rebuked the wind, do you know why he rebuked the wind? The wind's the enemy. The wind's the bad guy in the story. The wind's the villain. The sea is only responding to what the wind is doing. The sea's not doing anything wrong. It's just responding to the wind. And too many times we're bad to rebuke the sea. But he didn't rebuke the sea. He spoke to the sea. He rebuked the wind. Now my wife don't like for me to do this. And I'll probably hear it this afternoon. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you a word picture of what Jesus did. They woke him up. He popped up like a jack in the box, walked out on front of that ship, looked out there at the wind, said, Shut it up! And then he looked at the sea and said, Peace. Be still. See, we're too busy rebuking the sea when it's not the sea's fault. We need to make sure we're rebuking the enemy and speaking to the sea. Think about that one more time. The sea's only responding to what the enemy's doing. He rebuked the wind. Here's the word picture. Walked out on front of that ship and he said, Shh. He rebuked the wind, spoke to the sea, said to the sea, Peace be still. Guess what happened? The wind ceased. And there was a, what's your Bible? Great calm. Because when you're in a great storm, calm won't do it. You can't get a calm that'll help you in a great... Now, if you're just in a storm, you just need a calm. But when you're in a great storm, you got to have a great calm. I'm glad that I found a Savior that knows exactly what I need, knows when I need it, knows how to get it to me. He said, peace, be still. You'll find him in his peace. He said, peace, be still. And the wind ceased immediately. And there was a great calm. There's not even a wave lapping against the boat. I don't believe there's a bird singing. I don't believe a fish is jumping out of the water. I don't believe anything's moving. I don't believe anything is making a noise. It is a great calm. And watch what he does now. Some preach that he rebuked the disciples. Maybe he did, but the Bible didn't say he rebuked them. The Bible said he said unto them. He did the same thing to his disciples as he did to the sea. He spoke to them. He said unto them, now watch what he said, why are you so fearful? Why are you so afraid? And how is it that you have no faith? Now what I think he's doing is trying to lead them where they need to, uh, as my granny used to say, I know my wife will get me being a certified school teacher, but my granny would say at this point, she'd say, Jesus is trying to learn them something. That's what he's doing. He's not rebuking them. He's asking them so they will realize where they are. What reason he called for Adam? He knew exactly where Adam was. He wanted Adam to know where Adam was. He said, why are you so fearful? And how is it that you... Matter of fact, I'll make a play on that. How is it? How is it when you have no faith? How is it when you try the world? How is it when you try to handle it yourself? Don't work out too good. How is it that you have no faith? faith. I tell you what Jesus was giving them. He was giving them an instruction of peace that no matter how bad your storm is, no matter how uh, it tires you up, no matter how much it puts you down, you may be at your lowest moment. It may look like that giant. You may not have any faith. Your fear it may be out the roof. You may be losing your mind. You may be upside down. But what Jesus is telling them, no matter, you can count on me. Every time Bryce gets up and sings one with his 
mama. Every time out of nowhere, he just throws his hand up and says, praise God. Every time he grabs a, a tissue, excuse me, He'll get me for that, a Kleenex, and takes it to a saint who's worshiping with tears. Uh, it's almost like the Lord slides in beside me and says, it doesn't matter what the doctor said. Uh, it doesn't matter what the, the x-rays and the test and the surgery and the exploration of his body said. Uh, you can count on me when my storm, when I can't count on me, when I can't count on my faith, when I can't count on my spirit, when I can't count on my auction, when I can't count on pulling myself up. I'm glad that I can count on him. I can count on him. Just riding on a promise. When you're riding on a promise, you'll face a great storm. You'll find a great Savior. Now, I didn't go to all the right Bible college and seminary, and this won't be all that great, the outline. It's kind of come off the redneck side of town here. But when we get to verse number 40, or one, we'll find what we'll see in the storm, riding on a promise. You'll figure out some great stuff. You'll face a great storm. In that storm, you'll find a great Savior. And then you'll figure out. You won't figure it out on the mountaintop. You'll find it. You'll figure it out in there. But watch what happens. Peace be still. There ain't not a sound going on. Two of them fellows walked to the other end of the boat. At least two. Maybe more. Verse 41. Watch the Bible. They said, what manner of man is this? <laughs> Who is this guy? Weaver's country commentary, they said, there ain't no dude like this dude. <laughs> what manner of man is this? You know what they figured out? Figured out, let me say it real plain now, I get real country. They figured out no one like Jesus. Yeah. Ain't nobody like him, hallelujah. Yeah. Ain't no comparisons. There's no rivals. There's no equals. There's no other lily in my singular lily in my valleys, plural. No other rose of Sharon. No other chief shepherd. No other savior. No other God. No other friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Nobody that knows me and still loves me like he does. There's nobody like him. In the storm, they found out nobody like Jesus. Nobody like it. You can have this world and a thousand more like it. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Because there's no one like Jesus. Nobody. There's nothing like Jesus. Nothing compares to Jesus. It's Jesus. Nobody. One. No one like Jesus. What manner of man is this? He's in a class all by himself. Because there's no one else like him. They figured that out in the storm. And then they said, what matter of man is this? Watch it. Let me read it so I don't miss it. He said, they feared exceedingly. You notice they got fearful of him. They don't mention anything about the storm scaring them now. It's sort of like my daddy. Y'all, most of y'all know I'm not a preacher's son. I'm the son of a head-busting, hard-nosed, means a rattlesnake, hated everybody, including me. <laughs> hated everybody equally. That's how he knew he was never racist because he hated everybody and he hated them all equal. Mean as a rattlesnake, ill all the time, settled most things with his fist. <laughs> if he told me to jump on you, I was a whole lot more scared of him than I was you. And what happens in your storm? Is you scared of that storm? You're scared of that giant. And Jesus will come along and remind you, you're afraid of the wrong one. Reason you got no faith, you're afraid of the wrong one. Matter of fact, let me just throw this out. Jesus himself said, Fear not man who can destroy the body, but fear God who can destroy both body and soul in hell fire. He said what they feared exceeding and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? 
Not only did they figure out there's no one like Jesus, they figured out there's no Lord over Jesus. The wind wasn't over him. He is over the wind. The sea wasn't over him. Now think about this. Can you imagine? I, now I'm going to give the independent fundamental King James Bible, walk right, keep it tight, spit white and drink Sprite. Baptist! I don't go to the beach. Too spiritual for that. I go to the coast. And I like to go out there early in the morning before everybody gets out there. And that sun's just coming up and those waves are coming in. Now think about this. Why don't those waves come up any farther? Because he told them as far as you can come. When a hurricane comes through, he said, this is as far as I'm going to let you go and this is as deep as I'm going to let you get. But can you imagine he could walk out there and say, peace, be still. And they'd quit. Can, I, you been, how many of you have been out on a ship or on a cruise or anything in the water? That water's always moving. It ain't never calm out there on the water. It's always rolling and pulling. And, and, but he could say, peace, be still. The water ain't over him. The winds ain't over him. I got news for you. Your sickness is not over him. Your disease is not Lord over him. Uh, he'll tell your disease what it can do and what it can't do. And if he chooses to let you go out with that disease, it's because he said it would be all right if that disease takes you out, praise God. Because no giant bigger than him, no mountain too high for him, uh, no valley too low. He ain't afraid of the dark. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad when you're in the dark? Can't see your hand in front of your face. He ain't I'm scared of the dark but he ain't scared of the dark hallelujah he ain't scared of your giant he ain't scared of your financial problem he's not afraid of that thing you're afraid of you won't learn that on the mountaintop hallelujah everything's too good but you let the wind pick up all of a sudden you let the ship start rocking and lurching around and be about to go under and you'll find out ain't nobody like Jesus ain't nobody lord over Jesus I don't what tomorrow holds. I just know two things that he promised me at an old fashioned altar that he and I were going to the other side and come what may. Let the devil roar like a lion. Let hell come in like a flood. Uh, me and Jesus are going together to the other side. And when the boats are rocking or it's still waters, uh, I'm a riding. I'm a sailing. I'm a traveling. I'm a moving on a promise let us pass over unto the other side let's bow for prayer father thank you for the truth of the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost I pray for those who are facing a great storm may they in this very moment bump into you and find that great Savior help them Lord as they figure out that great stuff that they ain't nobody like Jesus and there ain't nothing, Lord, over Jesus. I pray that you'd grant it to be so for Jesus' sake. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.